Hello everyone, I am Tiffany Starr and you are talking with Tiff. I'm heading into surgery this week and before I go into recovery I want to drop a fun little video for you. This will be the first video in an ongoing series I like to call Trans Tales! A shorter talking with Tiff segment where I recount true stories about my life as a trans woman. And boy do I have plenty to tell. Today's story is about a gigantic swingers party I attended. A few years ago I lived in Texas, terrible state by the way, full of Republicans and holy rollers. That being said a lot of the largest cities like Dallas and Austin were very progressive and had an amazing night life. There's goth clubs, dance clubs, anime conventions, late night dining, high quality strip joints, and numerous swingers clubs. And it's at one of those swingers clubs where I met my good friend, Ryan, a social southerner with an accent as thick as my own. He invited me over to share some drinks with him and his girlfriend, and over the course of the night we double teamed some women, became friends, and exchanged numbers. And for the next year and a half we went on a plethora of wild sexy adventures. One of which was a 200 person swingers night at a luxurious mansion. The owner of said mansion was a wealthy couple, one a doctor, the other a lawyer. They were big in the swing community and sent out over a hundred invitations to different couples. Ryan received one of these invitations. Unfortunately for Ryan, his girlfriend couldn't make it. Fortunately for Ryan, I could. So I went as his date. We arrived early for a tour of the mansion and the different rooms people could utilize. Some of which had gimmicks like the anonymous dock room, where you can fuck all sorts of people incognito. Or the bondage room, where you could be tied up and used by multiple participants. And of course a gated backyard with a giant pool and a jacuzzi. I had a ton of sexy fun with lots of women that night. But I don't want to go over all that because it was just having sex. Sometimes in groups, sometimes one-on-one, -on -one, standard swinger stuff. No, what I want to talk about are the highlights of the night. The funny, unique, and sometimes awkward moments that happen in between fuck sessions. After the tour, the first thing I wanted to do was grab a drink. Had to loosen up in more ways than one if you catch my drift. So I made my way over to the bar where I met the lovely bartender, Abby. Being that Ryan and I arrived early, I was the only person she was waiting on. I introduced myself, requested a margarita, and we engaged in small talk, which eventually turned into flirting. I asked her if she'd be participating in the sexual activities tonight. She said she wanted to, but that there were only two bartenders on that night, so she wasn't sure if she'd be able to. I told her that if she found some time, I'd love to have some fun with her. Now, I know what you're thinking. How is flirting with a bartender a so-called highlight to this story? Trust me, we'll get to that. Setup is important. Eventually, people started to roll in, Ryan and I mingled a bit, and then went our own separate ways to find some fun. Later on, after a three-way with two other women in the upstairs bedroom, Ryan came in and asked me to follow him. Turns out he had his eye on a certain woman there. Problem was, she wouldn't play with someone unless her husband was having fun too. I didn't like where this was going. He brought me down the hall into the cinema room, and yes, they have a fucking cinema in the mansion, where of course porn was playing on screen cause you know, sex party. And there was the couple, the woman smoking hot, no wonder Ryan wanted to fuck her. The guy? Uh, not so much, but then again, I don't really like guys. Anyways, he dragged me over and said, look, look, I have a girl, can I fuck your wife now? I'm paraphrasing, but that's what it boiled down to. So Ryan starts feeling up this guy's wife, and her husband walks over to me and wraps his hands around my hips. Uh-oh. First off, I wanted to have sex with other women, not men. And I wasn't keen on taking one for the team. Secondly, and the bigger issue, is this guy doesn't know I'm trans, which is a disaster waiting to happen. After he started getting frisky with me, but before he took my clothes off, I told him I'd be right back. That I needed to top off my drink before we had some fun. Now, I wasn't lying about the drink, God knows I fucking needed one, but I was lying about coming back. So I ran downstairs to the bar where I saw Abby finishing up a couple drinks. So I went over to her and asked if she had some time for a bit of fun. She said she did for a bit, but she couldn't leave until the other bartender came back. 
So I hopped over the counter and started fucking her from behind while she was gripping the table. About five minutes later, a group of five women approached the bar and requested drinks. Keep in mind, I was still fucking Abby at this point. I was in a groove. I wasn't gonna stop. And you know what? She didn't ask me to, so I kept going. She said, it's okay, I can make drinks while we fuck. So I'm plowing her while she's making these women drinks. And the whole time she's moaning loudly, trying not to spill anything because I'm fucking her so hard. One of the women behind the bar said, wait, is she wearing a strap-on? Which of course, no I wasn't, unless you consider a penis a built-in strap-on. Another woman started complaining, saying, Come on, where's my drink? I want my drink! But then her big-dicked Chad boyfriend came over and chimed in, saying, Come on, she's been making drinks all night. Let her have some fun. That guy was fucking base. Shut her up immediately. Soon after, the other bartender arrived to relieve Abby. And when I pulled out of Abby to relocate, the women behind the counter were surprised and fascinated that, no, I wasn't wearing a strap on. Funny enough, I ended up fucking two of the five women behind the counter later on in the night. I guess I must have put on a good show. So Abby and I went into the dining room and finished fucking. When I was done, I went into the kitchen to grab some carrot sticks, only to be stopped by Ryan. He asked, where have you been? So I told him about Abby, and afterwards he said, well, after you left, the guy stopped me from doing anything with his wife. Because you ran off and left him alone, high and dry with his dick literally in his hands. To which I responded with, yeah, because you didn't tell him I was trans. To which he replied with, and I shit you not. Oh, I forgot you were trans. <laughs> oh my god. Just then, a man walked into the kitchen boasting loudly that I can make any woman in this house squirt. I am that good. I am the squirting god. And without a word, Ryan and I looked at one another simultaneously and smiled. We knew exactly what the other one was thinking. So we approached the man and Ryan says, I bet you can't make my girl Tiffany here squirt. To which the man replied with, Puh, didn't you hear me? I can make any woman in this house squirt. The entire time I could hardly contain my laughter, but I tried to remain stone-faced. Ryan replied, Oh yeah? I bet you fifty dollars you can't make her squirt. The guy looked at me and said, All right, I'll take that bet, but only if she'll allow me to do it. So I looked him straight in the eye and said, Go for it. He said, Okay, if you insist, and bent down to lift up my skirt. And as soon as he did, he immediately went, Oh no! Ryan and I bursted out laughing. It was the funniest shit we've ever done. So I asked the guy, What's the matter? Don't want to make me squirt? He gave us props for the trick, and Ryan and I were $25 richer. The moral of the story is, don't go around boasting that you're the best, or you might just meet your match. The rest of the night wasn't uneventful, it was just more sex. Besides, if something else crazy did happen, I doubt it could top the squirting guy. I still keep in contact with some of the women I met that night, and Ryan and I are still good pals. Hopefully sometime soon, he and I can have more adventures. But due to COVID-19, we're not able to be as promiscuous as we'd like to be. Still, I hoped my tale entertained you. I have more talking with Tiffs coming after I recover from surgery. So until then, have a sexy February. <laughs>